Thorson up the wing now. Oh, what a deke. Ricard Thorson. Oh my god, that was the nicest goal I've maybe ever scored in a game. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number 16 of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we've moved the Arizona Coyotes up north to Quebec City. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, make sure to head up into that top corner of the video right now. There will be a card with a link to the playlist, and if you do enjoy this episode, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. So today we get into the final quarter of the season approximately, and well, the team's doing well. We're currently sitting in about fourth place in the league. The only teams ahead of us are Winnipeg, Toronto, and Pittsburgh, and we get to play against Toronto and Pittsburgh coming up here a couple times towards the end of the year. Another team that's been really hot as of late is the Florida Panthers, as they are the only other team in the league that is 8-2-0 in their last 10, along with ourselves in the Quebec Nordiques. The other team that's been really, really good is the Seattle Kraken. In the last 10, they are 8-1-1 one, and, one, and are uh, definitely making a push to try and make the playoffs here in the later part of the season. So we're not going to worry about Seattle. We are more focused on Pittsburgh, Florida, and Toronto. Those are our teams that we have got to hit here this, this season to really make the playoffs and try to secure a number one spot and finish. So... Let's just slow sim the Pittsburgh or the Florida game. I'm not as focused and worried about Florida as I am about Pittsburgh and Toronto, but Florida's been hot, and that's all we can say. So, first period against Florida. It's a 1-1 game. Bedard opens the scoring, but Huberto ties it up on the power play. We outshoot him 10-8 in the first. Second period, Quebec goes off, scores two goals. Connor Timmons and Ricard Thorson get goals there under two minutes apart. And a uh, really good second period there from Quebec. And for the third period, we just hold on and win. Patrick Kane has been moved to Florida, and he gets the goal there for Florida. But we outshoot them 33-25 to in the game, winning 3-2. to And your three stars go to Samsonov, Timmons, and Thorson. As Ricard Thorson gets another goal this season, I believe he's up to 38 goals now. Um, so he is scoring, sorry, 37. But he's scoring at an amazing pace right now. I don't know who is actually playing better than Thorson. There's got to be a couple guys in the league that are outscoring him, but there can't be that many. So um, Thorson leads the team. Keller's right there as well with him. Shane Wright just a point below, and Bedard and Byfield. And, yeah, the, the whole two top lines are just crushing it this season. So for the entirety of the league, 95 points for Leon Dreisaitl. Oh, my goodness, he's going off. Um, the silly pod Colson's crushing it for Winnipeg to go figure McDavid and Shafley as well are up there. That all makes a lot of sense. Um, 50 and 52 goals for pod Colson and Dreisaitl. Those guys are insane. Um, after that, Kent Johnson is killing it in St. Louis right now out of all places. Um, that's actually interesting. I don't know why he's undrafted. He should have been drafted by Columbus, but... It is what it is, and Thorson's right up there too, um, along with Matty Beniers, um, Sammy Colton, who's a bona fide sniper, uh, Brad Marchant, who's been scoring for years, and yeah, that's um, not really surprising, honestly. Thorson is crushing it. We are not getting the t same type of scoring and level of scoring that the league leaders are performing right now, but that's not really surprising to to be completely honest either. So. Um, Something else I would really like to get to before we really get into this is contracts. And contracts are going to be an issue this year based on the fact that we're going to have to start to try and make some room and make some changes for this team coming up in the future. Um, so when we go and look at, obviously, our contracts, the team, or the players, sorry, obviously Quebec is the team we're dealing with, but the team... Uh, down in the AHL is doing quite well at the moment too. Um, Lander, I'm really excited about, but you look at these other guys. Gunler's going to come up this upcoming year. Bowmeister, we might get a shot of. We might get to see what he's capable of in the upcoming year. Um, and then Silvergard and Lander, of course, are going to be fantastic players. I'm really excited to get Lars Lander up into the team. I think he's going to be about an 82-83 by the end of the season, but we have some expiring players and some big name expiring players too. And those guys consist of Lucas Raymond, Connor Bedard, and who else? 
Krauss, Dylan Edmondson, Hort Meyer, and Brewer. So quite the names on that list. Um, we're already past the trade deadline, so we cannot actually make any moves. But for all of our expiring guys, obviously Connor Bedard is going to be the biggest um, piece that we need to sign here. But he is at nine, asking for nine point four seven million bucks. If we offer him eight years, it goes up. If we offer him less, it's not honestly much cheaper. So I think the nine point four isn't a bad asking price. But at nine point four seven five times eighty five percent we're looking at just over an eight million dollar contract and honestly if we could get bedard on even eight and a half million for the next seven years like oh my goodness that would be an absolutely insane deal lucas raymond wants 8.7 million which uh we are not going to be able to pay off completely with the cap space we have so he will probably end up as a restricted free agent um, looking at Lawson Krause, he's nice and cheap. We can absolutely offer like a $1.35 million deal for two seasons as he has been a really solid depth piece for this team so far. Simon Edmondson wants $2.45 million for the next three years. We're looking at 2.08, so about $2.1 million. Honestly, that's a really good deal too if he can start to grow. And best part is that will up his trade value and we can potentially trade him. Uh, Caleb Ortmeier at 22. 2.175 million. Looking at 1.85. That's actually a really good price price tag for him too. Especially if he starts to jump up here over the next uh, couple of years. Gunler, we will offer an ex or a contract to. He shouldn't be asking for a two-way at this point. He's better than that. Um, Sammy Blay will probably wait to sign, and then Byron Brewer is the one that's just 3.925 million is a bit too high in asking price. 3.33, so we're looking at 3.35 for the next three years for Brewer. Honestly, not the best deal. We've seen better defensemen um, coming up in the draft and things like such, but can we take a second to appreciate? Ethan Winquist here, who's got 69 points in just 52 games played for the Rockets, but is somehow not growing. Like, honestly, I don't understand why he's not growing. He should definitely be one of our best prospects now, um, considering what he's been able to do as a 20-year-old in the OHL or in the WHL. Uh, Cam Beats has shot up. Powell's been decent. Um, Chelios has actually made a pretty significant improvement as a second rounder. I'm excited to see if he can take the right steps to making the team. Um, and I believe that's it for those guys. As far as potential goes, I mean, we have some really big players coming up through the system. And uh, yeah, certain guys are really starting to grow. So I believe, yeah, I mean, Silvergard is the number one guy. No question about it, who's going to be probably making the team over the next season or so. Um, and of course, along with Lander and a couple other guys. But now that that is all sorted out, apart from Lucas Raymond, because I would like to sign Lucas Raymond, we can get to this Pittsburgh game. And Pittsburgh is definitely a team we are focused on. Um, nice. Okay, Bedard sticks for just $8.5 million. That's like a Leon Dreisaitl kind of contract. That's insanely insanely solid so we get bedard for that price gunler's cheap beautiful extensions and now we get to play against pittsburgh all right so here we go game against pittsburgh this is one of the most important games we are going to play all season as quebec and it is going to determine our position in the standings for trying to get that first spot so first period it's a two to one game as joseph and buchnevich get the goals for pittsburgh Lawson Crow scores on just one of our six shots, too. So, a little bit of a rough first period, but Pittsburgh played well. Second period, it's a 4-4 four four game as Lindholm makes it 3-1. Thorson makes it 3-2. Byfield makes it 3-all. Three, three 
and then Wright takes the lead for us before Matthew Joseph finally ties it up. So this is absolutely one of those games that we should jump into. Um, it seems to have been a very entertaining contest up to this point. And, well, Pittsburgh's probably playing above their grade right now just based on looking at their top players. But what can you do when a team is hot? They're hot. So here we go. In Pittsburgh... At the PPG Paints Arena, the Penguins take on the Nordiques in this regular season matchup. Third period underway, here we go. Connor Bedard darting through the neutral zone, looking for a play. He's going to send it back to Chitrin over to Soderstrom, who fires through traffic. Now Chitrin on net, and Ross is going to hold on. Not entirely sure who Pittsburgh's goalie is, but, um, well, Ricard Thoris and number six in goals this season so he is definitely somebody to keep an eye on but well let's see how this uh this third period shapes up so pittsburgh gonna win the face off forsling gonna come down the wing buchnevich dumps it in soderstrom's gonna get there first and find bedard who is taking off connor bedard is in walks in good try honestly didn't utilize the space he had there effectively so that's unfortunate Defense is changing the you can't score from behind the net. That's not seriously Seriously, we're gonna switch to even strength and just get scored on immediately. That does not add up What? You're kidding me, right? That was a goal Like yeah, sure they, they put passes together, but there was no opportunity. There was like zero chance to put that in the net I don't know how it ended up in there So anyways now we're really stuck for what we're gonna pull off here and we've given up a breakaway. Sweet. Zaka fires off the mask. Seriously? Give me a fucking break. Alright, here comes Byfield down the wing. Pass in front. Can't find it. Seriously? What was that pass? It was so inaccurate. Getzel, that's my puck, buddy. Nice try. Okay, we're going to hit Thorson here. Thorson's going to come skating up the wing. He's got space. Card Thorson cuts back. Centering pass right in front of Shane Wright. What a goal to tie it up with just 26 seconds left, and that is a huge play. Oh, my goodness. You cannot get any more clutch than that. Shane Wright's 19th and second of the game off a beautiful backhand feed from Ricard Thorson. Wow, okay. I was not expecting to actually tie that up, but the empty net apparently makes the difference. So, 26 seconds. Wow, that was uh, that was exciting. So, win the face off there. Timmons going to go for a bit of a skate. He walks in and shoots. Remember, their goalie's not very good. So, now Joseph cutting down the wall. We're going to cut this one back. Hop to Raymond over to Keller. Keller looking for a play, finds Bedard, back up to Keller, Keller cutting in, pass in front right there, and we are headed to overtime as Pittsburgh and Quebec both get one point for sure, but yeah, just a crazy chance right in front, and Shane Wright banged it home at the last second, so honestly, I don't entirely know how, um, I don't know how they, they scored that goal. Like, Greenway was just not in a position to put that away, and he did. So, anyways, here we go. One goal, I believe three assists for Ricard Thorson, too. He's been on fire tonight, but let's see if we can actually cap off an insane game here. And Bedard's going to lose the faceoff to start. Picked up by Getzel. He's going to get bumped off the puck here by the looks of it. Chitrin's going to win this around to Keller, and we got a two-on-one started. Here comes Clayton Keller. Cuts in front to Bedard. He just missed it. Connor Bedard, great battle. Pinned up there, Chitrin. I missed it. Oh, God. There we go, Bedard. Oh, take that puck, buddy. Oh, that is a hit and a half if I've seen one. Oh, we just absolutely murdered that player. All right, Bedard looking in front. Finds it, shoots through traffic. Good chance. We're going to win the battle here. Pass over to Bedard again. He's going to... What are you doing, Chitrin? Goodness. 
That was just bad. All right, I'm gonna send this one up. Bedard walking in. Oh my goodness! Pass in front to Chitrin. Oh, another great save by the Pittsburgh goalie. He's actually played incredibly well today. Pass up to Lindholm over to Buchnevich. He's gonna cut back to find his guy, but that's a good. Oh no, that's a hook. Seriously, man, I pressed A once, and the puck wasn't even there. How is that actually a hook? Seriously. Oh, bad timing again. Ouch. How much time's actually left? Under two minutes. So we got a minute 32 to try and kill off. Really not putting ourselves in good positions here. Oh, God, that should have been a goal. All right, well, Soderstrom's going to go for a skate here one-on-one -on -one against the defender. He's going to shoot. Hayton was right there, too. All right, Buchnevich coming the other way. Good poke. Not just once, but multiple times, Buchnevich. God, that's just such a nice goal. And there's nothing I can do about it. I set myself up for failure there, and the Nordiques do lose this one. On what was honestly such a crazy good battle. But we get one point, so I can't really complain. But I do wish we could have had the even strength opportunities. Because we did not get a single power play that game. And it showed, as Pittsburgh does finally capitalize on 1 out of 3. So, on to Toronto. Um, not an impressive loss, to be completely honest with you. I wish that I wish that they would call a slightly more even game. Even if it was 3-2 to two in penalties and they get the OT penalty and win. Fine, sure. But, like, 3 nothing on penalties is definitely a hometown call. So... Penguins have 90 points. We would have been right there with them otherwise, um, and they have opportunity to move even further up in the standings as we lose to them. We do get a loss in Kraus sign. Same with Brewer, same with Edvinson, and same with Ortmeier. Okay, beautiful. So we get everybody there on contract extensions except for Lucas Raymond, which, again, we're going to restricted free agent him. We're going to qualify him. Um as we just simply do not have enough money right now. We've got $4.4 in extension dollars. Not enough. It would be, um, or I guess it will be once um, Jacob Larson's out of here. And Sammy Blay, Brandon Dillon are also going to be out, so that's going to be very nice as far as clearing the books goes. 8.5 is such a good deal for, um, for Connor Bedard. He's just 20 years old too, so yeah. We're in a good spot right now, absolutely. But now that uh, that Pittsburgh game's over, we get to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs in what is going to be potentially one that uh, it's going to be one of the classic matchups here. Toronto has easily become the biggest rival of the Quebec Nordiques over the last four or five seasons, and um, yeah, both teams just seem to go at it every single night. So here we go. Um, First period against Toronto, Rasmus Sandin gets them on the board. We get outshot six or fifteen to six. That's just a brutal first period from Quebec again. Second period, it's two nothing. We gotta jump in and play. As Toronto's out shooting us twenty eight to fifteen. I'm not saying we're gonna win this game. We are in a very tough spot to be in, but maybe we'll convert something, maybe we'll get something going. So let's see what happens. At the Scotiabank Arena. Toronto versus Quebec, third period. The Maple Leafs up 2-0. Let's see what the third period has in store for us. So starting things off, Connor Bedard going to fire. He shoots it wide in the net, though. Barrett Hayton up to Fogel now. Warren Fogel walks in. Good shot, rebound. There you have it. Lucas Raymond buries the rebound for his 23rd of the year for number 23. And all of a sudden, this is a 2-1 game. I thought we were going to get goalie interference on that play, but uh, apparently not as Raymond finishes it off. So a little bit lucky, but we're in the right spot, and uh, Raymond does bury it on that short side. So 2-1 to one game now. This is a little more exciting. Face-off going to go back to Henrique. Now Bedard going to get the poke here. He's got some space, and he's going to look to wrap it around and fire rebound. Clayton Keller, beautiful positioning as he gets to the spot and buries that rebound again. That is two rebound goals in the span of about a minute and a half, and that's what happens when you shoot the puck. So Clayton Keller gets his 25th of the season, and uh, our guys are playing well. But yeah, make it snappy. He finds it and finds that open net before the goalie can get there. Two 
two game just like that. That's a beautiful comeback by Quebec here in the third. And there's still time. So, 10 minutes left. Let's see what the rest of the third period holds. Sammy Blay hits Lawson Kroos down the wing. He's going to get bumped, but not really knocked down. Ooh, Lawson Kroos. Or sorry, Sammy Blay. Oh, man, there is room there. Kubina just missed it. Now, Soderstrom walks in, gets laid out, but scores for his sixth of the season, and Toronto has given up a two-goal lead here. Oh, my goodness. Victor Soderstrom with the power move. Not exactly what you're expecting from a 5'11", two-way defenseman, but, oh, man, what a move to go right to the front. And Manson's a step slow on the play. Wow. Toronto gave it up. I didn't think there was going to be room there, but there was. We're going to flip this one out. Oh, Byron Potty takes a penalty. Not great. 40 seconds left. I swear it's the same narrative every single game. We get the lead. We look like we're going to win the game. We give up the power play goal. That's That just seems to be the storyline here, so... We can ice the puck, we can shoot the puck at the open net. That's what you want to be able to do at this point, especially with no goalie back there. So, Alright, so down to the final 10 seconds. Manson looks to cut it off. Oh, great chance here, Marner. No, 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 no. Okay, Samsonov, great save. And that is it. The Nordiques come storming back and score three unanswered goals to beat Toronto on home ice at the Scotiabank Center. Or arena. Wow, that was something else. What a performance it was. I said last episode we were going to change Samsonov's helmet. It didn't end up happening. Who's getting first star? Um, First star, yeah, Samsonov. Not really surprising there. So, I want to change his helmet so it looks decent, but... Samsonov's 29, but we're also paying him 8.5 million, which is a pretty big contract, so... I wish they had a design-your-own-mask or something like that. That would look so good, but... It's not the case, so we'll give Samsonov the blue helmet for now. Um, the pads look interesting, to say the least. They're a bit of a strange-looking set of pads, but that's okay. He's playing well, which is all that matters right now, and the Nordiques are winning, so... We get uh, Samsonov's mask looking a little bit better. Gustafson's up to an 84, seriously? That's like such a good overall for three years. Like we could almost keep him for that, but like over Samsonov and save a ton of money on the rest of the team. But we got the Rangers up next um, as well as Buffalo. And then I believe we have another Toronto game within five games of that. So we'll get into some calendar sim here. Um, never mind, we don't have a game for a while, so instead we're going to look at Florida again, because Florida's been amazing. Um, and we did have comments to go over that I totally just completely forgot about, but we had a couple different ones here that were interesting. So, um, first comment was from Duke Storm. He had a couple saying, I think the new update must have changed player preferences. I believe that's what happened here as far as we now have like a whole bunch of hold line defensemen, which literally just never used to exist. Um... The other comment that he had was saying that Hopkins guy looks sick, and yes, I think Francisco Hopkins is going to be a great player too in the near future, but unfortunately his uh, his scheme fits don't line up too, too well with our team. I would much rather look at a guy like, um, like Elijah Yashin, who's got 65 points in 52 games and really doesn't have any weaknesses as a two-way forward because his uh, his system fit just looks so much better. So there's options all around for what we could do, but then we had a very contradicting comment after um, another guy like Carter Green said, trade for the first pick this season, you don't have any franchise players. We do have Connor Bedard, but Hopkins would be a very nice complimentary piece to him as a power forward with X-Factors. But the final comment here came from Bryce Sirius saying, after this do a realistic franchise you're not allowed to trade up uh for so many picks and as many picks um and you can't trade for a star unless they're on the trade block don't trade picks so far in the future because you don't know if you will be good so a bunch of great comments there as well very contradictory to what the rest of the comments said but i like it i like some um 
what do you call it? I like some clash. I like some controversy. And uh, I think it's really great for the series overall. So, I mean, yes, as much as it'd be nice to go out and get a guy like Marcel Legault or Elijah Yashin or somebody like that, we're probably going to be picking a lot further down in the draft, which is okay with me. Um, there are still some really good looking players like maybe Leon Walzer or like, uh, what's his name? Gabriel Weimer. There's, there's some good looking prospects in here still. So that's how the draft's looking. And those comments are all, I find very interesting. So I want to hear what you guys really think below. If you agree with Bryce's comments on, you know, keep it somewhat realistic or just trade up because I mean, trading up is always going to be exciting thumbnail clickbait kind of stuff. But, um, Honestly, the way the team's playing right now, I want to try to maybe stick more realistic because we've got 94 points in 72 games. Florida's been pretty hot as of late as well. And, well, we're going to have to try to beat Florida here. So let's get into this game. Again, Florida has been one of the better teams in the league overall. And first period against Florida, they are up to on two goals from Denisenko as uh, they get off to a roaring start, even though they only had 11 shots. 14 shots for Quebec and only one goal is a little rough and probably boosting Spencer Knight's ego. So, second period, it's a 4-2 to two game. Ouch. That is not where we wanted to be as Heponiemi and Luo uh, Reinen both get goals. Thorsten scores with four seconds left. But, again, let's see if we can pull off a comeback. I doubt it against a very deep team like Florida, but you never know. All right, so against a team like Florida, I mean, in Florida, it's going to be a real tough opportunity to try and win, especially when you're down two heading into the third, but let's see what we can do. Ekblad makes it look easy. Oh, Patrick Kane just about had the goal there. That was a great opportunity. Now Florida breaking out, looking for some space. Joseph gets cut off there. Good play. Ortmeier finds Fogel. Fogel springing in, cuts forehand, backhand, and it's in the net. Warren Fogel, beautiful finish on the breakaway there. And just tucks it on what looked like was probably going to be a save, actually. But somehow it ended up in the net. I thought um, I thought that, honestly, um, Spencer Knight had it. But Fogel just, uh, just somehow finished that one off. I think he hit the post and it bounced back off of... Um, off of... Spencer Knight and in. That was just a very strange goal, but we'll take it. Alright, Keller up to Byfield now. Quinton Byfield over to Keller. Clayton Keller through traffic. Great shot. Better save. Keller now looking for a pass. Sends it across to Byfield. Great chances there. Soderstrom now through traffic. Great chance again. Centering pass. Oh my goodness. Down to the last 10 seconds or so. Keller in front. We got a hold. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how have we not put a puck away? I love how everybody's frozen. That's great animations. <laughs> okay. So the empty net is going on here. Got our second best guy out on the faceoff in Hayton. He's going to win it. Back to Edvinson. Edvinson gets the shot, but uh, eight seconds left. Not where we want to be. Hits in the game. We've definitely been the aggressors this game too, but Hayton is going to lose it to Verhage, and this one's going to go all the way down the ice. And they win the game. 4-3. to three. That was an exciting one, but uh, Florida does take it as Spencer Knight barely holds on. Man, there was opportunities there. So yeah, what a game that was. 44 shots for the Nordiques as well. Oh my goodness, I want to see. We got 19 shots in the third period to one. One shot for Florida, that's all they needed, and they got away with the win. That's actually insane. Two and two, that's all they needed to win. So that's a, that's a rough one, but close game nonetheless. All right, so we lose Pavel Semen to a concussion, so that's a little unfortunate, but Toronto is the last game of the season, so hopefully we can get on a roll here as we did lose to the Panthers, but we got some other good teams coming up here that, you know, 
Quebec very well might struggle with. So, um, these guys are killing it. I love how the AHL is looking right now. We have some very good players down here. So, um, absolutely no complaints on how they are developing and turning out. A guy like Tim Bodie has actually done extremely well this season. As long as, or not as long, but along with the whole top line and everybody else that's, uh, that's playing here. There's there's good players in the system, no doubt. So, game against Dallas. We will win 5-3. That is a very clutch win there. We lose Lucas Raymond to a bruised arm, unfortunately. Um, but we are going to wrap up the season here, coming into the wrap-up of the season. Um, we get Semin back after that injury, so he should be good to play. He is one of our few pinch and cycle defensemen. So, um, all right, advancing farther forward here against oh Philly, we lose four to two. That is a close game that I wish we could have won. We lose Brewer to a concussion, so now the team is definitely down a bit. But we beat Washington four one. Close game, or not really close game. And then we beat the Islanders five one. The Nordiques are rolling. I love it. Um, game against Chicago, we win 5-4 in a shootout, so that is a very close game, oh my goodness, can't believe that one got that close. Um, do we have Lucas Raymond back yet? No, we don't. I would love to get him back soon, as uh, really the rest of our defense is not looking overly spectacular by any means. Um, I am kind of wondering, is there any way we could balance this a little bit more to improve the team? Not really. I mean, yeah, Timmons and Chitrin is a great pairing. I think it's just that Timmons has zero X factors that's actually, like, contributing to that not working. So, huh, that's just strange. It's just a strange scenario. I'd rather play the zero, and Timmons and Ortmeier is a pretty decent second pairing still. So, um game against Columbus we win all right we are two wins away from a 50 win season which is actually really really solid it was what I was kind of hoping for or expecting from this Nordiques team but lots of guys are stepping up this season so let's continue advancing against Boston and the Bruins we win again as we are now on a five game win streak heading in against Ottawa do we beat the Senators we lose Chitra into a sore foot, so not ideal. We lose 6-4. Oh, okay. So we have absolutely no chance now of catching the uh, Maple Leafs for first in the division. Never mind. Um, well, the Penguins, yeah, we can't catch the Penguins either. And nobody's catching the Jets. So we are right neck and neck with Minnesota for probably about fifth place. In the league, uh, Thorson's got 45 goals on the season, so he is killing it. I don't think he's going to get another five goals here over the next game, but you never know. Um, all right, so yeah, Toronto 51, 21, and 9. They've had a great season again, and Winnipeg's just had a better season. That's the only way to put it. They have been a scary good-looking team. Their top six is insane. they got Morgan Riley now. Hellebuck's still in net. That's a good team there, but... We are vying for what looks to be um, fourth place. I mean, I don't think Minnesota can actually overtake us unless we lose a game and they win. Um, and same with teams like Edmonton and everybody else. We have pretty much secured fourth place as long as we can beat Toronto. So let's get into this final game, and then we'll wrap up the episode from there. But... Uh, the Maple Leafs are our final team we got to take on. Very fitting, considering how close a season it's been between these two clubs. And, uh, well, if we can hand them one more loss, that'd be fantastic. So, first period, it's a 2-1 to -one Quebec lead as Richie opens the scoring, but then Timmons and Keller, two Arizona Originals, get goals on just eight shots for the Nordiques as we get outshot 19-8 to eight in the first. Second period, it's a 2-2 game as Austin Matthews shows up, but... Oh, at this point, it's such a close game. I want to jump in, finish off the season on the right foot, and wrap it up from there. All right, so here we go. Third period at the Videotron Center. Nordiques, Leafs, tied two apiece. Let's see how it goes. 
but Dard gonna walk in and fire hammers that one off the blocker and it goes bouncing out of the zone. Alright, Soderstrom up to Keller over to Bedard. Connor and Bedard gonna walk in, shoot Keller on the rebound, and he finds it right away. Clayton Keller beats Manson to the spot on a fantastic finish, and the Videotron Center probably wasn't quite ready for that, but Keller gets his second of the night and uh, 33rd of the year off of a pretty sloppy rebound, to be honest. So, 3 to 2 game right off the bat. Let's, let's go. That's what we like to see. So, Face off here again, and it is a 3-2 game. Shane Wright going to go for the pin. Timmons on the battle. Thorson up the wing now. Oh, what a deke. Ricard Thorson. Oh my god, that was the nicest goal I've maybe ever scored in a game. Oh my goodness. He just absolutely dangled the entirety of... Of those Toronto defenders, Ricard Torreson makes it look too easy for his 46th goal of the season. And makes Braden Holtby look like he hasn't played 10 plus years in the league. Oh my goodness. That was some high-skilled hockey right there. Oh man, Ricard Torreson, it doesn't get any nicer than that. And it is 4-2 now for the Nordiques. Good stick there by Byfield. Quentin Byfield picks it. Oh, man. I feel so bad for Toronto that they're not going to actually have the opportunity to... Well, they might not finish second, actually, at this point, as Pittsburgh might catch them. Quentin Byfield on the shorty makes them look ridiculous. That was such a good poke check. Turns Sandine completely the wrong way. Sandine skating backwards, and Holby again just gets dangled. So, Oh, Braden Holby, three in a row. That's got a sting, so... 20 seconds into the penalty kill, too, and it's 5-2 for Quebec. All right, yeah, here we go. Fogel's got room. Lauren Fogel can't quite finish off that beautiful play. Bedard, rebound, Shane Wright finds it three times. That is so many rebounds. Oh, I feel bad now for Toronto. Even though they're going to finish ahead of us, they're getting outplayed by us at this point. And yeah, just like Shane Wright once finds his own rebound, Sandine's at the end of a long, long, long shift. And Shane Wright skating circles around him. So, 6-2 game. We absolutely demolish Toronto in the third period as we score, what, five goals? Something along those lines. And that is it. We will maintain fourth place in the NHL behind Pittsburgh. Toronto and Winnipeg as the three better teams so going in as the fourth seed into the playoffs is a really good spot to be we absolutely outshot them in that third period <sighs> four nothing in shots that's crazy actually how were the shots 14 to 7 and they threw more hits or sorry not more hits more face-offs they won more face-offs so very interesting game. I believe Clayton Keller's your first start with two goals there. But, um, yeah, fantastic game. All right, so to wrap up and conclude the season, Ricard Thorson scores 46 goals and 74 points to lead the Nordiques as they put up a 50-24-8 record for, I believe, what was 110 points? No, 108, sorry. But regardless, a very good season. And uh, they will finish fourth place in the league behind, again, those three, ste three teams stated. Um, everybody else looks like they are locked and loaded for what position they finished in. And, uh, yeah, we don't get a division win. Teams like Seattle and Florida both miss the playoffs in a bit of a strange turn of events there based on standings. But Nashville and Vegas will make it in as weaker Western Conference teams. So... I think if we can somehow actually manage to make it out of the East, we stand a really good chance of trying to win. Detroit might be uh, might have Francisco Hopkins on their hands if everything goes according to plan. As far as league scorers go, um, I mean, 46 goals is pretty high. Clayton Keller had another 73-point year. So did Connor Bedard. So certain guys playing really well there. Shane Wright... Puts up a 69-point season this year. He had 
his best year to date. Um, he did have a bit of a digression there last year, but or a recession in yeah recession in performance last year. But he steps it back up this year, putting up career high assists and points, but not goals as he did score 22 in his second season. But he hasn't been bad. Um, I would like to try and get him up to a point per game here pretty soon, if we can. But uh, but yeah, he's played quite well for his abilities. So our goalies put up a combined 32 and 18 wins. Um, not spectacular, but not bad. And our best rookie, Byron Potty, puts up 40 points on the season, so not bad at all. Um, and looking at the entirety of the league. Dreisaitl scores 114 points. Vasily Podskols and Potts, 64 goals. Um, we see Thorsen finish, what, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th on the list behind some other big names. Um, Kent Johnson is a bit of a surprise name in there, but he has played quite well up to this point, too. How many shots did Bud Colson take? That's a 416 shots. Come on, man. That's insanity. And we even had him on this team for a bit, too. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's your scores as far as defensemen go. The best scorer was Morgan Riley. Of course. Of course that's how it's going to go. Puts up 67 points. Um, the best defenseman from our team did not have anywhere near that. Where did... Chitrin actually end up. Oof. Only 44 points. So not particularly spectacular there. Like Sandine had the same amount of points. So yeah, uh, a bit of a down year for our defensemen. That does happen year to year too, but but yeah, wow. Um Evan Bouchard has a year as well, 59 points. Same with Quinn Hughes and Brant Clark. Wow, Brant Clark had a year at 23. I guess he is listed as an offensive defenseman, so that's not really surprising, actually. And for goalies in the league, our goalies aren't going to be anywhere near the top, but Michael DiPietro for Pittsburgh wins 45 games, more so than Hellebuck, Lukanen, or Georgiev, who are all on really good teams, too. And the best rookie this year puts up 58 points, Trenton Sorelli. Not really a surprise there, as he was the number one pick. But uh, the only two players that finished higher than him were uh, Fritsch for uh, Dallas, who was picked three years ago now almost. Um, and Fabian Lysel was right there too. But Byron Potty finished third in the rookie campaign, so not bad by any means. Um, David Jirasek playing for Columbus, actually not looking terrible now. Um, but yeah, he did not fit our system, so that's why we ended up walking away from him or trading him. Uh, Draper as a 10th overall pick, not bad either, but uh, who's the best rookie goalie? Best rookie goalie. Was Samsonov, really? How can you say Samsonov's a rookie goalie? He's definitely not, so that's a glitch, um, but cool. <laughs> Uh, but Wolstead put up 19 wins, so that's not bad. Okay, so that wraps up pretty much the entirety of the season. Um, it was a crazy year, to be completely honest. Definitely a lot of improvement around the league. Not just for the Nordiques, but we do finally make the playoffs finishing fourth in the league. Second highest finish to date. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads, and of course, make sure to leave comments below to get featured in the next one. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time.